hello, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to take a snowy drive and respond to this video from Dennis Prager. Is there an afterlife? Life after this life ends? As far as we can tell, the answer is no. I'm curious to see how you define afterlife, because it's not as simple as you probably think. But please continue. There probably isn't a human being who hasn't asked this question at one time or another. You know, that's an excellent observation, Dennis, but you're asking a leading question. A more appropriate question would be, do you think something happens after we die that we can experience? Because not everyone thinks about an afterlife. For example, plenty of religions don't believe in them. Some religions have the concept of a heaven and hell. Others have a concept of a reincarnation that goes on forever, and your life is actually someone else's afterlife, and someone else will be your afterlife, for example. But, in the interest of brevity, sure, most people do, indeed, contemplate their own mortality. And here's the answer. If there is a god, there is an afterlife. For one, that's not an answer. For two, there can be a god who doesn't grant afterlife. Three, there can be an afterlife without a god. Four, there can be neither. And five, an if-then statement is merely a premise in this regard. It's not an answer to the question. It's that simple. Okay, fine. There is no god, there is no afterlife, it's that simple. I answered your question. I can assert things too, Dennis. And here's why. First, this life is filled with an immeasurable amount of injustice and suffering. The only way there can be some ultimate justice for victims of evil is if there is an afterlife. And the only way comfort is available to those who suffer unjustly, from painful disease and premature death to the death of a child, is if there is an afterlife. Well, for one, no. That's not the only way you can get those things. Two, now you're asserting there is a god who is all-powerful, who created those things, and you think he needs to give justice to the people he afflicted them with. I I'm just surprised you're ballsy enough to admit that your god caused all those things and is going to bring himself to justice by deciding whether or not to punish you? That's a really weird belief, Dennis. Do you understand why people do not believe that? Third, this is a blatant appeal to emotion. You know, I would love it if unicorns were real and I could own one as a pet. And the only way I can own one as a pet is if they are real. So therefore, unicorns must be real because I want to own one as a pet. Do you understand why your logic falls flat? But such an afterlife exists only if there is a good and just God. Nonsense. God does not have to have your sense of justice, Dennis. What if God punished the people with cancer who did bad things in a past life? Or what if it's just karma, a natural force, that we can't perceive for some reason? It explains it and provides a justification for it, exactly as your God does without need of an afterlife, or without need of a god. I don't know why you are conceited enough to think that a god would have your sense of justice. Maybe God's sense of justice is so alien to you that you cannot understand it. Maybe he doesn't exist. Yes, if you want divine retribution, then you require a god. But that doesn't mean that there is a God or you're going to get divine retribution. A good and just God provides a way to compensate for all the unjust suffering in this world. According to you, according to the Bible, he merely sends people to hell who do not worship him. And plenty of people who worship him get cancer. You see, if your God is so just... Why does he give Christians cancer, but not all the Christians? Second, since God is not physical, the physical world is not the only reality. 
Woo lads! Okay, couple things to unpack here. First one, Dennis just admitted that his God could not possibly have placed Adam and Eve in the garden, or given Moses the commandments, or opened the floodgates of heaven to flood the earth. Because God is not physical, and therefore, he couldn't have done those things. Those require physical actions. Secondly, this is another appeal to emotion. You want there to be a place where your God can exist, so therefore it must exist. Again, I want unicorns to exist. Does that mean they exist? Also, while I'm thinking about it, if your God's realm is non-physical and can just kind of exist, then why can't the realms of every other God be exactly the same way? Why can't all the gods exist in their own non-physical, special, little, dimensional pockets? And then literally, you believe in Christ, you go to Jesus. Or you believe in Odin, you go to Valhalla. And so on. Why, why can't that be, Dennis? Why is it only that your magical, special, non-real, real place can exist, and not everyone else's also? I mean, if there are places that can interface with us without interfacing with us, why can't there also be other places that interface with that place that also can't interface with that place? And our place. And all the other places. And now I'm going to take a moment and grab a drink because I, I think I might be melting my mind anyway. So let's go whole hog. There is also a non-physical reality. And I say there isn't. And we humans have a part of us which, being non-physical survives the death of our body. We call it the soul. So this thing you've never seen is there because you want it to be there even though it's not actually there. But it's definitely there. Because it's not there at all. But if there is no God, this physical life is all there is. And that's a really weird thing. If you believe that justice comes after you die, then why do we have court systems? that you actively participate in. Like when you claim someone's video, as I remember happened at least a few times. Why would you use content ID at all if you believe that God will sort those people out for you and that you should just deal with it now so God can reward you later? Again, I don't believe that. That's why I think those systems are important. But I don't understand why you do. So, no God, no soul, no soul, no afterlife. And again, all three of those things can exist independent of each other. But apart from that, at least you are understanding now what we actually believe. We don't believe there's a god or a soul or an afterlife. Or at least, I don't. Other atheists do believe in a soul or an afterlife. And some deists still believe in all three, including the gods you don't believe in. Just throwing it out there. Now, of course, those who doubt God's existence have every reason to doubt an afterlife. And still further, some people who accept the existence of a God do not believe in an afterlife that is founded upon justice. Some of them believe only in an afterlife that rewards you for dying in battle, or an afterlife that makes you run on hot coals for 40 days until you are reincarnated into someone else until you eventually attain enlightenment, which again has absolutely nothing to do with justice, and does not require a god. But, 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 if you believe in a good god, then you have to believe there's an afterlife. You're right, I don't believe in that. But even then, you don't have to believe in it. Some people believe god works in mysterious ways, to make things right while you're alive here. If you say you believe in God, but not in an afterlife, the God you believe in is not only not good, that God is cruel. So the God who sends anyone to hell who does not believe in him to suffer eternal torment and also advocates for slavery and advocates for killing children who speak up against their parents. He's cool. You think he is just. Who killed himself pretending to be his son on a piece of wood just to make you believe that anybody who doesn't believe in him is evil. You, you think he's a good person. The guy who turned Pharaoh's heart hard 
so that he literally could not believe in him, the one thing God asked him to do, and so therefore sent the plagues upon Egypt. The one who gave over Job to Satan to let Satan screw with him incessantly just because you believe that is a good person, a good God, and you think anybody who doesn't agree with you doesn't believe in a good God. That's pretty stupid, Bragger. Your God is insanely cruel. And the fact that you think that is good shows me that you're kind of psychopathic as well. That God made a world filled with unjust suffering. Well, at least we agree that the serpent lying to Eve was unjust. And at least we agree that if your God is real, he made all the suffering. I guess we're kind of on the same page. And just left it at that. Whereas you believe God created an imperfect creation, which is why he has circumcision involved and all those good things, and you believe that he actively gives people cancer, causes people not to believe in him, then punishes them forever when they don't believe in him and worship him for giving them cancer, and you don't think this is cruel. Do you understand why I must oppose you, Dennis? And why I must oppose your God if he is real? which I do not believe he is, but do you understand why you sound like a lunatic, Dennis? Now, some people who don't believe in an afterlife offer their own version of immortality. Look, you can believe your made-up story, they can believe theirs, and in the meantime, I'm going to be over here doing science, okay? I'm going to be over here doing skeptical inquiry against both of you. I once attended a funeral where the man officiating said... While there is no afterlife, we do live on, through our good works and in the memories of loved ones. That's what a lot of people who reject an afterlife want to believe. See, here's where you're projecting yourself on everyone else in your straw man. One, he's talking about living on as a memory in other people. This is a legitimate thing to say. In the same way that by reading a book... You let the story live on. You can live on in a person's memory as they remember you. It doesn't mean you have an actual existence after you're dead. Secondly, to the projection point, in your mind, you seem to want there to be something, therefore it must exist, and you think that other people can only believe in things if they want them to exist. I have no emotions concerning gravity, but I know it's real. Regardless of whether I want it to be real, it exists and I can demonstrate it to you. But the idea that human beings live on through their good works or through the memories of loved ones, which generally means a person's children or grandchildren, is simply meaningless. If you're telling me that your version of afterlife is no different from the meaning conveyed by that phrase, then your entire argument falls flat on its face, because then yours holds no meaning either. If people live on through their good works, then children who die don't live on. See, Dennis, this is where I think you're being purposefully obtuse. It's as though I said to you, you can go from Maine to California by flying or by taking a car. And you say to me, well, it's not possible for me to get across the country because I cannot fly. I do not think you are this stupid, but you're making it very difficult for me to demonstrate the contrary. The number of good works most children are even capable of is minuscule. See, Dennis, the good works also do not live on if people don't remember them. In this way, they are much like the child. Their legacy is still a thing, but only if people remember it. As for babies who die, well, babies can't engage in good works at all, so I guess they just don't live on. You clearly missed the point of what the fellow was saying, to such a degree that it's impossible for you to comprehend normal human speech anymore, isn't it? This is akin to a conflation of terms fallacy, where a word has more than one meaning and you attempt to use a different meaning than the context gives you as a defense for your argument 
which falls flat. Anyway, the truth is that bad works usually live on longer than nearly any good works. And despite this, you still live on in people's memories, don't you? People don't suddenly forget Hitler because he did bad things. He still lives on in our memories as a bad person. In fact, if works make us immortal, Hitler, with all the evil he did, is far more immortal than the kindest people on Earth. That's fantastic. I wish I had watched this first. I would have picked anyone else. But the point remains, he clearly is still living on. Although I wonder, does Prager not believe in hell, even though God says bad people will live there forever? As for living on in the memories of our children, what do we say to those who have no children? Sorry, you don't live on. Well, he said loved ones, not children. Presumably that includes people like your friends, acquaintances, and so on. But yes, unfortunately, some people will not leave much memory. Blame your god for it, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't have kids, but plenty of people will remember me. And if that brings them comfort, then more power to them. I will be dead. I will not be the one who needs to be comforted. Seriously, how selfish do you have to be to take someone who is trying to comfort the family of the deceased individual and just shit all over them because you don't agree with them? If it gives the people, the next of kin, the friends, the family of the deceased, some level of comfort to think that their loved one will live on in their memories and the minds of others, why are you downplaying this? Regardless of how I feel about someone, the ones around them, to whom they were important, should at least have the comfort of knowing that person left, you know, whatever legacy it is, even if it's not a good one. Moreover, living on in anyone's memory, as beautiful as that is, is not the same as immortality or an afterlife. Then why did you drag me down this tangent, you disingenuous man? You even know it's not the same thing, and you've still done this. As Woody Allen put it, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. Good for him. I don't want to live forever. I want to live long enough to retire for about ten years, and then be buried six foot under until the heat death of the universe. Or until the sun expands and eats the earth, I guess. If there's no afterlife, we don't live on. Period. Let's be honest enough to acknowledge that. I, I believe that I already have, Dennis. But you see, now the problem comes to be that you need to show me that the afterlife is real. Otherwise, you are actually the one having difficulty accepting this. For you see, if I am correct... I lose nothing. There's no joke. It's just that you're right. If there's no afterlife, then I just die. That doesn't bother me. It's annoying, I guess, from a particular perspective. But it doesn't really bother me. It's all that painful stuff that happens right before you die that I'm really not looking forward to. You see, Dennis. If there's no afterlife... None of us will ever again be with those we most love and who love us. If there's no afterlife, neither anyone murdered nor any murderer will ever receive ultimate justice. See, that's correct. That's why we must try to value the time we have with them here. And I don't believe that we're going to have divine justice when I die. And that's fine. I realize that I am not going to be vindicated for all the things done negatively against me. And that's okay. Part of becoming an adult and growing up is accepting that life is not fair. Some of us learn this lesson earlier than others. We also learn with it that being fair to others is a virtue, and that we should seek to attain it while we are alive, because it's the only life we get, and people will remember what we do, you see. If there's no afterlife, this life, for the vast majority of people who ever lived, 
and for those alive now, is a meaningless crapshoot. You know, it is kind of a crapshoot. But I wouldn't say it's meaningless because, you know, I'm experiencing it. I give it meaning. I find the joy and the sorrow in it. I understand that this is the only one I've got. And that makes it much more interesting. Just because you cannot find meaning in a world where every criminal is not punished doesn't mean the rest of humanity can't. Finally, people always ask me, so what happens in the afterlife? Well, for one, you haven't actually told us that an afterlife exists and shown us why it's true. You have just said if you want certain things, then other things must exist. And that's correct. Those are called premises and conclusions. And for them to have any meaning at all, you have to demonstrate that they are correct, which you have not done. To which I can only respond, I don't know, but I do know this. My belief in God and the afterlife keeps me sane. So if there is an afterlife, you just admitted you don't know if it's actually run by a god or not. You don't know what kind of experience it's going to be. You don't know if justice will be doled out. You don't know that it will be divine retribution and everything you think it is. But you are still asserting to other people that it absolutely positively is, even though you just said you have no idea if it is any of the things you just claimed that it is throughout the rest of the entire video. I'm glad to hear the only thing that keeps you sane is the ability to generate narratives within your head which are complete fantasy. The thought that this life is all there is means that torturers get away with the horrors they have engaged in. But it also means the people they tortured don't have to think about it for the rest of eternity. As strange as that might sound, and as much as it might hurt to lose someone close to you, Sometimes it is a relief to know the person is no longer in pain and no longer has to remember the thing that caused them pain. And uh, just to preface, preempt another point, if you go to heaven and you suddenly can't remember all the bad things that were done to you, what's the point of having an afterlife that's based entirely on justice? If God can make you not know all the bad things that happened to you, and that, therefore, is paradise, then why do you think he would create a separate place for the people that did bad things to you to go? Let it sink in. It's subtle. It means that this life is random and pointless. It's funny that you brought up torturers, because the alternative is that your god is the one actually doing the torturing by allowing the torturers to do their thing, being all-powerful as he is, does your god go to hell when I die? I'm curious. And it means that I will never again see anyone I love. This would drive me mad. In fact, I don't see how it wouldn't drive anyone mad who cares about suffering and who loves anyone. You know, even if your god's real, there's a very good chance you're not going to see him or your loved ones ever again. Because your god could send all of you to hell. Because you, as the man leading the family, allow women to put up videos on your channel. Remember, women are to remain silent, and you're supposed to enforce that as a man, according to your Bible. So, by your own logic, you're not going to see your own family again. And you've also damned those people whom you allow to break the Bible's commands to also be sentenced to hell. Do you not care about their families? And by that logic, are you not one of the people torturing them? Dennis, if you cannot be logically consistent, then you're not going to convince me that you actually believe what you say you do. Yes, I realize the idea of being separated forever from everyone you ever knew or loved is terrible, and yet your God does just that to anyone he deems unworthy of going to heaven. Just keep that in the back of your mind, Dennis. And that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed that, you know what to do. Be sure to share it, and maybe leave a comment down below so the algorithm does 
whatever it's supposed to do to give me all them views and make me all that fake YouTube points. And as always, this has been Reverend JR, signing off.